Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be a book video. It is going to be the book reviews and the book favorites from my blog Chiclet Plus for the month of April. So usually I do a book review video and then a book favorites video. I usually separate them but we only had I think four book favorites for April so that probably wouldn't be a very long video. So I'm going to combine the two so we have a little bit more content for this video. So it's going to be all of the reviews from me for books that I read personally for Chiclet Plus in April and then also the book favorites on Chiclet Plus and that can be from me and any of my reviewers on my review team for Chiclet Plus. So if you are new to my channel or not familiar with my bookish side, my channel is now mainly focused on beauty because those were the most popular videos. These were the ones that were constantly being requested but I do want to still share a few book videos along the way because that is my career. I am a full-time author. I do run a blog called Chiclet Plus. We feature book reviews and other author features over there. Um, I also do a lot of freelance work for books such as editing, proofreading, marketing, that sort of thing. So I like to be able to keep some of my, my book videos in here as well. Um, if they start getting requested more again, then I'm happy to do those. But I was just finding that the beauty side was being much more highly requested. So I want to make sure I'm putting out content that everyone wants to see without getting away from who I actually am. So wanted to let you guys know that. But if you would like to see some of the reviews and book favorites from Chiclet Plus in the month of April, Starting please keep off, watching. The first book that I reviewed in April is Keep Me Posted. This is by Lisa Beasley. I will insert the covers over here for each title like I normally do. From Amazon, it says, two sisters share the surprising highs and cringeworthy lows of social media fame when their most private thoughts become incredibly public in this fresh and funny debut novel. Um, we follow sisters Cassie and Sid. And when I read the synopsis, I just, I thought this would be a book that would be for me uh, as someone who is in social media, like I consider social media a part of my job. It is something that I have to do in order to get word out there about my books. It is something I have to do to make sure my blog stays relevant, my Instagram piece stays relevant, my YouTube stays relevant, etc. Like I just, I have to be on social media. And of course, social media is great, but there are also so many downfalls to it. So I was very curious about this one. And we have two very different sisters. Sid actually lives overseas and is someone who, she almost kind of is like a hippie type. She doesn't believe in social media. She doesn't have social media. Her sister Cassie lives in the US. She's someone who's like addicted to Facebook. She just, she loves social media. She's always on it. And the sisters decide because there's so much distance between them, they decide to start penning each other actual letters and sending them to each other. And they're doing that and as they're writing these letters, you know, they're going in depth about issues from their past or issues from their present and just really talking to one another and being honest with one another. And Cassie, for whatever reason, decides that she wants to keep all of these letters and she scans the letters and she uploads them to a blog. She keeps the blog private. There's a bug, a crash, a virus, something happens. All of a sudden the blog is now public and people find this blog and are reading the letters back and forth from the sisters and like mayhem ensues. Now, I get the concept of it, I do, and I and I find that interesting because they were people who didn't want social media fame, they didn't want social media attention, it just kind of happened to them by accident, but I just really struggled with understanding what the big deal was, I guess. There is, the only part that I like was like, okay, I feel like I get this, was one sister was dealing with some infidelity issues on her part and I understand having that be exposed or really you know your private thoughts I get it you like you don't want them exposed but in the book it didn't seem like it was that big of a deal it I don't know I just was confused as to like why the world was falling apart and the one sister flies to see the other one and, and I just I just kind of didn't get it I didn't get it I wasn't connecting with it I don't know you know maybe it's my age maybe it's my job I don't know, but I just, I struggled to see the huge issue 
and it just kind of fell flat for me. So I only gave this one a three star review just because I, I just struggled so hard to connect with it and also just to connect with the characters. I, I did not feel much of a connection with either sister and I don't know, just kind of turned out to be not for me, which really bummed me out because I thought this one would be like a if not a favorite, very high up there on my list, but only three stars for Keep Me Posted by Lisa Beasley. The next one I have is The Big Interview. This is by Libby Kirsch. I also read The Big Lead by Libby Kirsch, which is the first book in the Stella Reynolds series, and I loved The Big Lead. I gave it five stars. I was so excited for The Big Interview to come out. I felt so grateful when Libby Kirsch reached out to me and asked if she could send me a review copy because this was a book that I definitely did want to read. Um, just like with The Big Lead, I thought The Big Interview was fast paced. It was a very enjoyable mystery. It was a lot of like twists and turns. Definitely not a mystery that I felt like I had solved in the beginning. I knew there was, you know, going to be more to the story and who was actually behind all of the, the murders and everything that was going on with Stella Reynolds. Uh, I didn't find myself that I enjoyed it as much as The Big Lead, and honestly, that's pretty common with series. Usually the first book is just like, ooh, ooh, loved it, loved it, loved it, and a lot of times the second book, the third book, etc., can just be like, oh, but you just didn't quite measure up to the first book. Like, that's very common, at least for me, so while I did still truly enjoy this one and had a great time reading it, I, get, I did give it a four star review, but this is definitely a mystery series that I say to check out. The Stella Reynolds series from Libby Kirsch. So the next one I have is also the first book favorite. This is a review from me. It is from Always the Bridesmaid by Lindsay Kelk. And I, I was very grateful. Lindsay actually sent me a print copy of this book and she also sent me a really cool tote bag that has to deal with the book as well. And I just was very grateful to not only get a book, but a tote bag as well, because I can never have enough of those for real. But I really enjoy Lindsay's books. I have read so many from her. She's a fantastic chiclet author. Always the Bridesmaid, I have to say, is hysterical. I laughed so much. I laughed unexpectedly. I snorted with laughter. I remember like one night, the night that I snorted with laughter, my husband was like, seriously, and I was like, I'm sorry. That was just, that was really funny. So many good humorous moments in here, and I really enjoyed it. I'm actually, I'm looking at my review right now, and my very first line is, all right, the first thing I need to say about this book is that it's funny. Funny. <laughs> so, I thought it was a very funny book. So if you like humor, if you like chiclet, this is a really, really good one. I definitely suggest checking out Lindsay Kelk. She is such a strong writer. If you are a chiclet fan, definitely a writer for you to check out if you have not. And I gave Always the Bride's Night. The next one I have is Evanthea's Gift, and this is by Effie Kamenow. Not totally sure how to pronounce that name. Um, but this one... I said in my review that I wasn't quite sure what to expect with this book and it was a little bit different from what I would normally read. Very interested in it though because of all the talk about Greece and Greece is like have it has been at the top of my list of places to visit for years and years. I don't even know how many years. It's just always been at the top of my list. So I thought it would be a lot of fun to read. Uh, I did enjoy the writing. The writing is very very strong in this novel. There's a great love story going on that goes across like decades of time I thought was very interesting but I love the scenery the settings um, the bits of like culture that we get throughout the book I really enjoyed those moments so while to me it was a little bit of a slower read um, I, I mean it wasn't like literary fiction I wouldn't call it literary but it was more leaning on the contemporary literary side so if you enjoy that I would definitely suggest Evanthea's gift to you but I did end up very much appreciating the story again I was very impressed with the writing in here and I gave Evanthea's gift four stars the next one I have is a another five star from me. This is for Sister Dear by Laura McNeil. I love Laura McNeil as a domestic suspense writer. I have also read and reviewed Center of Gravity. I know it ended up in a favorites video on this channel because I just thought it was so fantastic. I was waiting so eagerly for Sister Dear to come out and I felt very honored that Laura contacted me and asked if she could send me a review copy. So excited because I was just waiting to read this book. Uh, from Amazon, it says, All Allie Marshall wants is a fresh start, but when dark secrets refuse to stay buried, will her chance at a new life be shattered forever? So, I'm not going to lie. The only thing that kind of, like, threw me off was that I didn't feel like the blurb really drew me in. And to be honest, I didn't feel like I really knew what the story was going to be about from the blurb for some reason. I... 
I don't know, I wasn't like putting the pieces together and that actually made me a little bit nervous before I started to read the book and I read the blurb. I was like, okay, but mm -mm. I mean, fear gone because this book was incredible. I gave it five stars. I absolutely loved it. But basically we follow Allie who is in jail for murder and we can tell, you know, we know from the book that she did not commit the murder, um, but she was it looked to be like she was framed or there was a lot of pressure to find the killer right away. It was the football coach that got killed. The story is set in the South, which for some reason, like I just love Southern fiction. I don't know what it is, but you know in the South, people take their football very seriously. My family lives in Alabama, <laughs> roll tide. So that's actually where this book is set as well as Alabama. Um, so she, you know, her case is very fast, very quick. She gets put into jail. She has a young daughter that she has to leave behind. She has a great life. She was a, a medical student. She was going to be a doctor. She was about to be engaged. You know, she had a great man waiting for her. She had this little daughter and everything is taken away from her when she is committed, uh, when she is uh, convicted of this murder. And as we go along, there are several different point of views in this book, which I thought was very interesting. We get Allie's point of view, we get her sister's point of view, which obviously the sister has some sort of role in all of this, if you can't tell based on the title, Sister Dear. Uh, we get the sheriff's point of view. We're going back and forth between the past and present, and it was insane to read. I mean, obviously I'm not going to like sit up here and like tell you guys everything because I really want you to read this one for yourselves and I don't want to give too much away because as you slowly start to peel back the layers and get into more of the mystery, it's just like jaw dropping. I'm sorry if you guys can hear my dog. She's right across from me and she is snoring so loud. So loud. Whoa. Uh, but it just... It was fantastic. It was suspenseful. It was, it was eerie. I mean, that's like, that's a word that I feel like would readily describe this book. It was eerie. The situations that happened, the situations that were let happen, and then the whole murder, the crime, the situation, it was just eerie but it was so good to read about if you are a fan of suspense i highly 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 recommend laura mcneil to you center of gravity i gave five stars and sister dear gave it, got a big old five star review from me the next one i have is will you won't you want me by nora Zelov zelovansky i'm not sure if i'm saying that right either and i always feel like when i say this title that i'm like tripping it up this is another one that i thought maybe i would really get along with and that i, I kind of didn't um basically we're following marjorie plum who says she was never meant to peak in high school she was queen b now 10 years later she's lost her sparkle what was the last line i thought it was a good one it says it's a funny often surprising novel about growing up when you are already supposed to be grown I really like the synopsis. It sounded pretty interesting to me, but unfortunately, I mean, from the beginning, I just struggled so hard to get into this book. I did not connect with Marjorie at all. Um, I kind of found her to be shallow, not very likable. Uh, I tried, I, I tried so hard so many times, but I just could not find like it was just one of those books where I just wasn't excited to pick it up again. I was mostly picking up the book and reading because I knew I had a review due for it, but I wasn't very excited about it. The first half of the book especially, especially lagged for me, which is so hard when it's the beginning of the book because then you don't want to read it. Um, I'm not someone who does not finish reading novels because you just never know what's going to happen. And for this one, I'm glad because the end did kind of turn around, which is why I gave it three stars versus two stars. The ending I did enjoy. I honestly kind of felt too like we didn't even need the first half of the book. I was kind of like, I don't know if I truly gained anything out of that because by the time I read the end of the book, I was like, that was really good. And I felt like something different could have happened to make the book as a whole better. But again, it's just my opinion. You know, everyone's going to have different opinions, especially when it comes to books, of course. But for me, it just it just kind of fell flat throughout. I'm glad that I waited till the end and I and I kept reading because I did enjoy the ending. I thought it was a lot of fun to read. I thought it was interesting. There's a lot of... Uh, twists and plot twists happening at the end of the book that I enjoyed reading about. I just wish the beginning would have started off 
as strong. So that is a three-star review for Will You, Won't You. This one is another five-star review. This is from my reviewer, Andrea. The book is To Lure a Proper Lady by Ashlyn McNamara. Uh, just by looking at the cover, it appears to be a historical fiction. The review says, I cannot praise this book highly enough. If you love historical romances, you must read this novel. The love story is wound tightly and expertly throughout the perplexity of the Duke's mysterious illness. There are just enough tantalizing scenes to break up the maze of this Victorian clue. Everyone's a suspect in this whodunit. So again, that is a five-star review from Andrea for How to Lure a Proper Lady by Ashlyn McNamara. Another review from me is for Love, Alabama. This is by Susan Sands. I absolutely love the cover of this novel. Um, I also saw the words Southern in the synopsis and Beauty Queen, and I was like I'll read this one because again I don't know what it is about southern fiction I just I love it so much I don't know if that means I should move to the south or what but I just enjoy reading southern novels um I really did enjoy this one this is a the second book in a series the first book is called again Alabama I have not read that book it did not hinder me from reading love Alabama I could just tell as I was reading that you know there is a first book um there is the LaRue sisters that we follow and this book we follow Emma. So in this book it's interesting because there's a lot of serious discussions in this novel and a lot that makes you think and a lot that makes you cringe, a lot that makes you angry, but at the same time it never felt like a heavy read. Uh, it read very much like a chick lit novel except there was just a lot of those serious bits thrown in there, but I really enjoyed it. Um, again, like I said, it is a part of a series I would like to read again, Alabama, just because I really enjoyed getting to know the LaRue sisters and the family. Um, sounds like there's a bit of mystery in the first book as well. I also hope that there will be more from this series because I would love to read them. But again, I gave four stars to Love, Alabama by Susan Sands. And then the last five-star review that we had for Chicklet Plus, and I think I have two more reviews, but one other five-star review is from Christy, and this is for When in Rome by J. Lynn Rowan. So Christy's review says, A quick read, wonderful story, and outstanding writing makes When in Rome one of my favorite books of the year. So that is huge praise. Huge, huge praise from our reviewer Christy for When in Rome by J. Lynn Rowan. Definitely a book, sounds like to check out. Uh, for all of the books that I have mentioned, I will leave their links to Amazon below if you are interested in purchasing the book. And I will also leave the review links to Chiclet Plus. So if you would like to read the full review on there on Chiclet Plus, all of that will be linked in the description box. Another review I have is for Lemon Twist by Sharice Olson. Uh, the synopsis really pulled me in. The very first line in there is, how bad would it be if we didn't get married? It said, Audrey is planning her perfect wedding for her perfect life and perfect future as Dr. Gregory Smith's wife. Right up until he calls with the news, his chilly feet have gone icy cold. I thought that was very interesting. The beginning of this book really had me. Like, it really pulled me in. I enjoyed the writing. There was a lot of drama to it, but I understood it because, you know, Audrey, her wedding is being called off, and now she has to tell people her wedding is being called off. She's losing the man that she loved, and she's losing this life that she thought she was going to have. She was actually going to pick up and, and move to Alabama, leave her job, leave, you know, her friends behind to marry this man, and he calls her and breaks it off, really gives no good reason besides saying... The, you know, he's basically just a huge commitment phobe. Like, when he thinks about getting married, he wants to be sick. Like, he still wants to be with Audrey, but he just doesn't want to get married. And obviously, I feel like it's really hard to go back to a relationship once you've been engaged and you have a wedding plan and you break the wedding off, but you still stay together. I usually don't see that working out. But uh, as the book progressed, unfortunately to me, once I got to about the halfway point, it kind of lost me. And I guess I kind of got frustrated with Audrey because it seemed like the only thing that she was really always centering around was men and like needing approval from men or needing to be with a man and I, I kind of was getting a little frustrated because first it was her fiance, then it was a boss at work um, and then even as we keep reading and going farther there's still men seem to be like the focal point for her and that was a little bit frustrating to me. I did find it intriguing when she decided to move to Costa Rica to be a missionary. It was a little bit out of the blue for me, but um, there's also a lot of religion in this book. There's religious like, quotes from the Bible and stuff that happens frequently throughout. You know, even though I'm not someone who considers myself religious, um, it's not something that bothered me. It is something I want to point out because I know some people can get bothered by that sort of thing. Um, it didn't really bother me. It just was like who the main character was, but she does go on to Costa Rica to be a missionary, which 
like I said, it was a little bit out of the blue for me, not so much since her faith appears to be a big part of who she is. Um, so it kind of started to bring me back a little bit once she got to Costa Rica. She was trying to learn the language. Um, she was trying to do her job there. That kind of got a little bit more interesting to me, but unfortunately just with the parts that lagged so much and kind of left me a little bit uninterested, it was kind of hard to pull me all the way back into the story. So I ended up giving it a 3.5 a star review. And so that is for Lemon Twist by Sharice Olson. I do have one more book that I will be reviewing in April. I am actually finishing it right now. I'm about halfway through the book, but I did want to mention it. It is called Scar Tissue by MC Domovich. And this book is freaking creepy. It's like giving me the chills while I'm reading it. It's more like a suspense type of book, but basically we're following Sierra Kelly who gets kidnapped and like tortured and it's by a, like a serial killer called The Cutter because he's cutting like words into his victims and she gets away but she's left with these horrible scars on her body and she's constantly fleeing from these men who are trying to get her and torture her and I mean it's not they really don't go into depth into those scenes because if the writer did I probably would not be able to really read this book because I cannot stomach things like that um, it's more of just like the suspenseful parts that we're getting, but then we also get like the little bit of backstory that's happening. That is creeping me out. But like I said, I'm just about done with it. I'm actually reading it like, like my Kindle is on next to me. It's on. I can see it. I can see the words because I'm always multitasking and I'm always reading, but it is a very good book. I'm pretty positive. I'm going to give it a four star review, lest something like super crazy happens at the end. But again, all of my links to my reviews and to Amazon will be in the description box below. And that is everything. And that is everything for this video. I hope that you enjoyed some of these book reviews and book favorites from my blog, Chicklet Plus, for the month of April. I also do have one announcement to make that is bookish wise. Um, I do own a publishing company publishing company is called Marching Inc. And one of our books from Marching Inc. is called Perry in Progress by Kat Lavois. It has recently been formatted into audio as well. And the audiobook has gone for sale on audible.com, also on Amazon as well. I can leave the links to Perry in Progress below, but if you are a fan of audiobooks like me, then that book is recently available on audio. And I'm so excited because I love audiobooks. I'm also very excited because the same narrator that we got for Perry in Progress is currently in the midst of recording Up To I Do, which is my fourth novel, so that will be available in audio very soon. Also, I actually just teamed up with Audible um, as an affiliate for them, which I'm very excited about because, like I mentioned, I love Audible. I've been a member for at least a year. I think I signed up with them last summer and I absolutely enjoy them. It's so easy to get an audiobook. I love to listen to audiobooks when I walk my dog. Um, so I'm just getting back into my audiobook game now that the weather is getting nicer and I'm taking more walks with Aries. I have gotten through two audiobooks so far and just totally enjoy them. Uh, Audible, I think, is a very easy process to find them and to get a membership, but also as an affiliate with them, they did give me a link. Um, I will leave that link in the description box below, but if you use that link to join Audible, to if you are a new member and you use that link to sign up, you can do a free trial with them and you can get your first audiobook, one audiobook, for free to listen to. So it can kind of be like your test run. If you decide Audible is not for you, you can cancel. There's no anything on your end that you have to do or pay for. If you decide that you do like Audible, you get your one book for free and then you can go on and choose a membership option that works for you and get audiobooks every month or whatever it is option that you choose works best for you. But I'm really excited because, I mean, Obviously, Audible is something that I use myself. I listen to audiobooks every single day. I personally love the audiobooks, but not only that, it's where my audiobooks are sold. My third novel, Questionable Friendship, is an audiobook. It's for sale on Audible. I used their great program for authors to create, to find a narrator, and to create my audiobooks. So, just a big fan of Audible. Very excited to be working with them. Um, this video is not sponsored. It's not sponsored by Audible or anything like that, but they did give me an affiliate link. So, if you do use that link and you sign up and you get your first audiobook for free, I do make a small commission off that. So, just so you know, it is an affiliate link. But again, it's not just something that I'm 
saying to you guys it's something that is used by me every single day so if you want to try out audiobooks and you've been kind of on the fence about it because I was on the fence about it I actually used someone's referral link when I signed up for audible to see if I liked it because I was like I don't know I don't know if I'm gonna use them or not like Am I gonna like audiobooks? I was the same way when it came to ebooks. I did not go out and buy a Kindle right away because I was like, what? I don't understand what that is about. So I was I was on the fence as well, but if you do want to try it out, again, that will be listed below. I think it's just audibletrial.com slash Samantha March maybe. I don't know. It'll be linked down below. I'll also leave the links to Perry in Progress as well as any other Marching Ink book that we have down there. I'll leave all those linked in the description box for you in case you are looking for some recommendations as well, whether you are a new or already member of Audible. Okay, but I think that's it. That's all I have to say. I feel like I've been talking for so long. I need to go get a drink of water. Quite thirsty. I hope you did enjoy this video. Please do give it a thumbs up if you did because that really does help me out. It lets me know if you guys are still enjoying these book videos because otherwise I really don't know what you guys are liking. I hope you will subscribe before you go and I will catch you very soon in my next video. Bye!